Okay guys, I wanted to make a video just addressing some of the questions that I get about international shipping. And this is something that seems to really like make people freak out and fret and worry when they start selling on eBay. So I want to explain to you a few things that you need to know about international shipping and hopefully clear up some of the questions and make you feel a little bit better about it. So I do highly recommend that you ship internationally when you sell on eBay, especially if you're selling things that are lighter in weight. Now, if you're selling, you know, electric guitars or, or uh, bread machines or what, whatever, you know, something heavy, that's a whole different story. I sell mostly clothing and shoes. So if you're selling things that are, let's say, less than four pounds, five pounds, typically you should do fine with international shipping. Now, that doesn't mean that the occasional horror story with international shipping doesn't happen. I personally, many, many years ago, had one issue where someone bought a pair of shoes for $85 or so and then claimed they never received them. And the problem with international shipping is that you can't prove things as easily as you can in the United States. So you can only track your packages to a certain point. And then once their local post office or postal system picks up, it's very hard to track your package and prove that it was delivered. So is there an, a, a possibility that something could happen and you could end up without your item and without your money? Sure, there's always going to be that possibility. So the first thing I would say is if you're not very comfortable with that, then don't ship every single item internationally. So if you have something that's worth $100, $200, $300, then maybe you don't want to ship internationally using the straight international um, option. So here, and I'm on one of my listings because I'm going to show you what to, what to do in the international section. So I'm just going to revise one of my listings to show you. But let me explain that there are two different ways to ship internationally. So eBay has a program called Global Shipping, GSP. And the way that the Global Shipping program works is that when you're within the United States and, and you are signed up for Global Shipping, let's say that your only option for international buyers is that they purchase through the eBay Global Shipping program. What would happen is the person would purchase and they would pay the shipping that is what you have listed for within the United States. So let's say that someone, you have domestic shipping for $7.95. Then, then you're, that's what you're going to have to still pay to ship it to an address in Kentucky. And in Kentucky is like a big processing center that belongs to eBay. And what they're going to do is they're going to open up the item, make sure that it actually is in one piece. It's what it's supposed to be so that you're not trying to pull a, you know, a fast one on them. And then they're going to repackage it and they're going to ship it from Kentucky to the final destination. So now the problem that a lot of people have with the global shipping program is that it is more expensive for the buyer. The buyer has to pay more fees. So it does curtail some international sales you might have made if the buyer looks at it and goes, I'm not paying that much to ship something. It's less expensive to the buyer if you ship it direct to them and not through the global shipping program. But when you're brand new to eBay and you're not, or, or even if you're just brand new to international shipping, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable just using the international, the global shipping program. So again, you would ship it to Kentucky and from there you have no responsibilities. So if, if between Kentucky and let's say the UK, the item breaks, that is going to be on eBay. They're not going to take your money away from you. They're not going to make you refund the buyer. So all you have to do is safely get your item from you to Kentucky. And that's it. Most international buyers are not going to want to do a return. Let's say they get the item and it doesn't fit. They're not most of the time going to want to do a return because it's going to cost them too much to ship it back. So that's the global shipping program. So when you're listing and you come down here to your shipping area and you check this little box, that means that you are participating in the global shipping program. So when the buyer looks on their end and they have their location information put in, then it's going to quote them how much it's going to cost. But that doesn't have anything to do with you. 
you're only paying what you need to pay to get it from where you are to Kentucky. So, which is basically going to be pretty equivalent most of the time to what you would have just charged someone within the United States. Then eBay is going to, you know, wrap all those costs together and they're going to charge them a different amount. And that doesn't, you don't, you don't mess with that. You don't quote that. You don't have to alter that in any way. That is something that is done through the global shipping program. But some sellers opt to offer global shipping, but also offer other shipping options. So here's where it gets a little bit dicey for people. And this is where people start to kind of get freaked out. Because again, some countries have better shipping um, postal systems than others. Some countries, they pick things up at the port on bicycles and they ride into the countryside to give out the mail. I mean, it, some places are still very much like that. They're not as advanced with their, all of their technologies and, and systems like we are here in the United States and, you know, in Canada and some of the other countries. So it, it, you do, you know, even if you went somewhere like Italy, you know, there's some cities that are, that are robust cities, but there are also villages. And, and so if you sell something to a little village, then, you know, you don't really know how it's going to get delivered. So again, there's always that possibility that it doesn't make it there. Or that someone says it doesn't make it there just to get something for free. There's always that possibility. It doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen a lot to me. Um, but it is a possibility. So in those circumstances, let's say this, let's say that this dress that I'm selling was a, a $150. I'm probably just going to leave it at global shipping and, and let it go that way. Or maybe I look in here and I say, okay, I want to ship it, but only to certain countries. So what I recommend when you're first starting out, instead of doing what I do, which is a flat cost, do calculated shipping. That way you're protecting yourself as well as you can as far as how much shipping is going to cost. Let me grab a quick drink, guys. You're protecting yourself so that you don't find out, okay, I charged $15 and it's $35 to ship it. So with calculated... Um, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and put what it weighs. And you can even put in dimensions if you want to of like the box that it's going to be in. But let's say this is a dress. Okay, so maybe this dress is a little heavier. It's going to be one to two pounds. So now I can go back up here and I can choose whether I want to send it worldwide, which means no restrictions. It's going to any country. It can go to Russia. It can go to Ukraine. It can go to Canada. It can go to Australia. It doesn't matter. Or you can choose a custom location. So when you choose a custom location, you can say, okay, I'm okay with Canada. I'm okay with the United Kingdom, you know, blah, blah, blah. I do worldwide, but some people do limit where they want to send it. Um, so you can do that. Or a lot of people right now are doing just to Canada. And that's because um, something happened with the, with the shipping rate to Canada and going through global shipping with Canada is extremely expensive for people in Canada. And most of us are not worried about shipping to Canada. So in that situation, you might want to have global shipping and maybe you just want to ship to Canada. Maybe that's the only other country you want to open it up to because you don't want your Canadian buyers to not be able to purchase from you. Maybe that's, maybe that's this, you know, what you want to do. You want to have an option for people just to Canada so you can ship just to Canada and everybody else has to go through global shipping. Or you could, you could do what I said before. You could go to custom location and you could choose Canada and the United Kingdom. Maybe that's the only two that you're comfortable with. So as you go on, you can change this up if you want to. You can decide, okay, well, I've been shipping, you know, to these two countries successfully for a year or so. And maybe now I'm, I'm okay with also including, you know, Germany and France or whatever. Honestly, I don't ever have any trouble with my international buyers. Um... You know, but and you can also decide not to offer any of this and it, everybody has to go through global shipping or they just don't buy from you. Just be aware that when you only offer global shipping, you are limiting the sales that you could get because people are aware that this global shipping program is expensive. And so a lot of them, when they do their searches on eBay, they won't they will purposely exclude anybody who's only shipping to glo the, the global shipping service. So you know, you are missing out on potential buyers that way. So that is something to just keep in mind as you make the decision on what you want to do. But I do recommend that if you're going to do anything aside from global shipping, do it as calculated. 
and just, you know, maybe even pad the weight a little bit. So if something's right at one pound, do one to two pounds because you're going to have a box, you're going to have packing material or, you know, something that could make that weight go a little bit over. And, and international shipping rates are very expensive. So hopefully that helps to explain the two different types. You have your global shipping, you have your direct shipping that is you straight to the customer. And you can have a mixture of both. So that what will happen if I had this and I had calculated and I had it at one to two pounds and then I chose, um, you know, I want to ship it to just Canada and I want it to, oh, also let me mention, anything four pounds and under or under four pounds, let's just call it under four pounds, is first class international. So in the United States, domestic mail is 16 ounces or less. But for international, first class is four pounds or less, which is why it's great for clothing. So when you do your shipping, you usually want to choose first class international as long as it's four pounds or less. So I would choose that. And so now this would come up and let's see if it will actually, let's see if we can take a look at the listing just so I can show you what it would look like. So then the buyer is going to have the option to choose global shipping or they can choose um, the direct way. So let's click shipping and payments. And I'm going to change my country to the United Kingdom. And so right now what you can see is, um, I don't know why it's so, oh, this is, this is uh, the global shipping program. So it's showing global shipping. This item will be shipped through the global shipping program. And it is showing it as $25.79. So this is just a dress. So they would have to pay $55.99 for this dress, plus they would have to pay $25.79 to have it shipped. Now I'm looking because it should also show them the other one. Let's click. Let me get back in. It should show them the direct option too, and I might just be missing it because I'm not used to looking for that as a domestic. All right, let's go down and look. Huh, it should still show the, oh, I didn't say Canada, duh. All right, let's go back. Let's look at the listing again. I have to tell them that I'm in Canada. So you can see right there what happened. The UK, their only option would have been the GSP program. So, Let's go down and pretend that I am from Canada. All right, so Canada, get rates. So now you can see here that this is First Class Mail International and that's that would be $15.50 if I were to send it First Class Mail International to Canada. That's how much they would pay which is not very expensive, but let's go back just so I can show you the difference for people in Canada. So $15.50, let's turn off the option and make it to where they can only go through the GSP. So I'm going to turn, oops, wrong one. I'm going to turn this off. Their only option now is going to be GSP. Okay, guys, I stopped the video for a minute and had to um, just, I went in and just resaved my listing again. For some reason, it had lost, it had lost it. So as you can see, when we first looked at this, if we were shipping direct to Canada, it cost them $15.50. If I'm shipping through the global shipping program right here, it was going to cost them $26.44. So you can see that it is quite a substantial cost difference for the person paying over or well, right at $11 more than um, what they would have paid. So if you are wanting to sell to your Canadian buyers, then you might want to consider having an option that is direct to Canada because that's a pretty safe place to be shipping to. So hopefully this has been helpful and um, hopefully you won't be so scared of international shipping now. And I will talk to you later. Bye.